Tonight on the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror, Mary Lou is back, and she is pissed. And the students of Hamilton High are in her crosshairs. Michael Ironside in Hello Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. episode of the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror! Unshade from the content Nazis! Yes, episode number 22, episode 22. Oh my goodness, we are, we are basically 10 episodes away from the end. And coming off of last night's um, interesting <laughs> movie, kind of disgusting movie, uh, the Hong Kong supernatural gross out fest known as Goo or Bewitched. I thought, you know what, it's time. It's time to come back to the wonderful 80s American horror movies and to uh, talk about a movie that is kind of the, the attempt to create a franchise out of a pre-existing horror movie and they kind of succeeded but in a way I think it's almost kind of almost um, a forgotten movie because you really don't hear it uh, mentioned too often uh, here and there but that movie is the sequel to the wonderful prom night and that is hello Mary Lou prom night 2 yes yes so what is prom night 2 about, well, back in, I believe, what, 1957, um, the precocious Mary Lou is about to become the prom queen. And uh, the uh, person that uh, took her to the prom, well, he's going out to get her some uh, punch, and she decides to go make out with some other dude in the back uh, behind the stage. And, of course, that pisses off the guy who actually took her to the prom. And so he decides that he needs to get revenge. And apparently some pranksters have a smoke bomb. So he decides to take the smoke bomb. And then when she gets her crown, throw the smoke bomb on stage. And of course, ruin her beautiful moment. Because, you know, she kind of ruined his night. By basically playing tonsil hockey with another dude. So... Anyways, the whole thing goes awry, and apparently uh, prom dresses in the 1950s are made out of paper soaked in oil because, man, that thing just went up like a Roman candle. And of course, she burns to death, and uh, fast forward to the 1980s, and uh, apparently... They kept all that stuff from that tragedy era in a locked, well, not really a locked chest, but uh, easily accessible to anyone who goes to the prop department. And lo and behold, someone opens it up. And apparently the only thing that it takes for the vengeful spirit to manifest itself is someone uh, taking like a jewel off of the, the crown tiara. And of course that just pisses her off. So yes! Mary Lou is back, and she wants revenge, and she wants what's rightfully hers, and that is that prom tiara crown. So, of course, we have a, a lovely lady who, I guess, becomes the target of Mary Lou's possession. She starts to see things and 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 notice things and be transported to almost all, like a Silent Hill-esque uh, uh, hell school scape. Uh, but uh, so basically the movie revolves around her losing her mind and perhaps becoming possessed and the school principal who happens to be the same guy who um, set the smoke bomb and lit her up like like a uh, torch, and the local priest, who happens to be the guy that was playing tonsil hockey with her behind the stage, 
Uh, they, of course, have start to notice some weird things, and can they be able to defeat the evil spirit of Mary Lou, keep the, the one lady from being possessed, and keep the prom from turning into a bloodbath? Of course, we all know the answers to those questions, because we watched it, right? No, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. So, let's get to those scores, shall we? Violence score, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Like, some of the deaths in this movie are brutal, and that's what I love about 80s horror movies. This definitely took the creative approach to some of the kills. I mean, we had this death by computer. Uh, I was hoping that it would have ended with a head explosion, but, you know, we, we gotta be... Uh, we gotta be you know, a little bit uh, wary of uh, the MPAA during this time period. So, unfortunately, no head explosion. But still, some pretty good kills. And, of course, an iconic kill. In, the, in my honest opinion, an iconic kill. Like, with lockers. And if you watch it, you know what I mean. And, honestly, does, does hiding a locker ever work in a horror movie? I mean, isn't it just you're trapped and now you're dead, basically? I know, I guess there was uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. I think someone successfully used locker hiding to at least escape temporarily. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not a, not a good idea. So, three out of five. Shock value, I'm going to give it a one out of five. There is one good scare in this movie. The rest of it, not very scary. Um, and not super explosively gory. But uh, enough violence, but nothing like super like, oh my god, shock. And yeah, I guess you have the sort of typical 80s horror movie type of ending, but uh, nothing nothing too drastic. One out of five. Uh, plot, uh, two and a half out of five. It's, it's a fine tale of possession, but it is kind of dumb in, at parts. It, uh, it... <sighs> I don't know how, how, how I could describe it, but there are, there are certain things in this movie that just flow a little, um, oddly to me. And I don't, I don't like the, the narrative sets up a whole bunch of, uh, tropes, I guess you would say, and a lot of cliches. And it, um, I mean, it's a, it's a quintessential 80s type movie, but it, it doesn't do anything spectacular with the story. And therefore, really, it's just kind of average, like two and a half out of five. Uh, acting, I am going to give it a three out of five just because of Michael Ironside playing the principal. He is always wonderful in whatever he does. And I don't give a shit about the other actors and actresses. They're kind of forgettable. Though the actress that plays Mary Lou does get super bitch down pat. So anyways, three out of five. Uh, nudity, I am giving it a 2 out of 5. Look, um, there's just a scene where <laughs> this girl just, just, she's in the locker room and she just, she's just naked. And, uh, she's just walking around naked for a bit of time. And, uh, it's very gratuitous and pretty much there just for the nakedness, and I'm not complaining. Two out of five. Good job, guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, enjoyment factor, three out of five. It is just a fun movie with some nice kills. It is definitely a nostalgia hit to the heart. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, I just like it. I just like these type of movies. There's some cheesiness to them. Uh, there's just these kind of elaborate, unique kills. And it's just fun. And yes, Girl walking around naked for several minutes. Anyways, <laughs> so three out of five. However, my overall impression is a two and a half out of five. Yes, it is a little bland at times. It doesn't, it, it falls on the, the, the same old, I guess now they're pretty tired, uh, cliches. However, um, it's still an enjoyable watch. It's fun. Get some popcorn, have some adult beverages. And just, just have some fun and be entertained and enjoy the movie. Two and a half out of five. That averages to a 2.4 out of five. Look, it's, it's good. It's not great. A lot of it is just kind of okay. And yes, it feels like there might be a little bit missing if, if they could have like had that head explosion. They could have done a little bit more. 
uh, with certain plot points and characters, I think it would have definitely elevated itself. However, it's a great attempt. The, the psycho bitch, <laughs> Mary Lou, is an interesting villain. And yeah, it, it, it could have, it could have been the start of something very interesting, uh, with a franchise, but they, they never really did too much with it. I think only two other movies came out. And the Last Kiss and Part 4, I can't even remember the tagline for it, but I mean, Part 4 is like completely unrelated to almost all the rest of them, so I don't know. Anyways, that is it. Episode 22 is in the books. And tell me what you think. Have you seen Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2? Do you agree with me? Do you think that... It's fun, but pretty average in almost all the other aspects. Or do you think, no, actually, it's complete garbage and unwatchable, and how can you even have any kind of enjoyment in that movie? I don't know. Or, it's great, it's Shakespeare. I don't know. Leave a comment in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a whatever anymore. I don't know. I'm oh, so tired. We're getting there. We're almost done. We're almost done. But yeah, uh, so anyways, and also, if you want to watch Mary Lou, Hello Mary Lou, Prom I 2, for free, you can go to voodoo.com, this is not an advertisement, but they have a section where they have movies, they, they call it Movies on Us, you do have to have ads, there are ads that play in there, but one of the many horror selections that they have is Hello Mary Lou, Prom I 2, you can watch it, streaming on Voodoo. Tonight, and you can then say, wow, Zonko was right, or no, he's full of shit. Anyways, there's a lot. There's some, actually, there's some really good ones in there, too. Like, uh, <laughs> like Dario Argento's uh, Deep Red was in there. I don't know if it still is, but if, if it's still there, man, watch that movie, too. That is an awesome movie. Anyways, I've talked too long, and so... I will see you guys next time on the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror. I am falling apart, man. Oh, my gosh. And uh, remember, Internet, stay scary and don't hide in lockers. Don't hide in the locker. You have nowhere to go but death. Ah.